Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the reaction to President Biden's State of the Union address, plus Vice President Harris joining us live with the view from the White House. And desperate search for survivors in Turkey and Syria after that catastrophic earthquake, the glimmers of hope this morning. And overnight, LeBron James breaking the NBA's all-time scoring record. Michael sat down with him to talk about what it means to him. You'll see that interview right here on GMA. San Antonio's newest escape room has opened up at the rim. Coming up, we get a sneak peek as a few members here at KSAT 12 went to check it out. And checking trans again, I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. It's going to be slow going in spots today, folks, due to the rain in our area. And some of that has been pretty heavy at times. We'll talk to Mike coming up. I'm ABC's Faith Abube on Capitol Hill. President Biden delivers his second State of the Union address. Why some Republicans were booing and jeering in the chamber. Coming up. Let's look out there with live cam. You can see it's been raining this morning. That cold front moved right on in on Wednesday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine, everybody. Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 8th. Thanks for joining us. I think today is a good time for maybe some warm coffee instead of the cold coffee. A little chilly out there. <laughs> chilly and wet. An absolute downpours in some areas. And Mike has been tracking it for us all this morning. Yeah, most everybody has seen some rain as the front moved through overnight. And then it's been sort of spotty in nature. Uh, but still, we have some showers out there. And we're going to continue to see more. So even if it's not raining where you are right now, I'd still take an umbrella throughout the rest of the morning because all this will continue to kind of move across the area. I'll show you that in a second. But out there at the airport, obviously, we do have some rain and uh, most of the roads, like I said, are wet. This is the big picture. We've got this band off here to the east from LaGrange down toward Quero and then a little closer into town. We've got uh, just some scattered moderate showers, light to moderate showers up here right around shirts. There is in Randolph Air Force Base. There's uh, one of them uh, decent down pour here. Also, them just moved through Elmendorf, another little band of rain over by uh, New Berlin. And then, like I said, a little further up to the north around shirts. And this is going to be sliding up uh, 35 in toward New Braunfels. Not anything overly heavy, but just a good, quick, decent downpour and then out in portions of the hill country. Now earlier this morning there was a report around Kerrville of anywhere from about P to marble sized hail there. That's the last report that I've seen of any hail. Uh, we do have a couple of cells though. This one that is continuing to work its way further up to the north. A couple of decent downpours and yeah, not anything to really write home about, but just a lot of scattered light rain. That's beautiful that that big cell moved right over Medina Lake right there. Keep it coming, hopefully, for the next couple of hours. 48 here in town, 43 in Comfort, Kerrville, 50 Seguin, 52 in Gonzales. So temperatures are still three, four degrees above their respective normals. That's going to be a different story, though, tomorrow and the next couple of mornings. More on that in a second. A decent breeze coming in here out of the northwest in behind that front, which moved through late last night. Did produce some rain out ahead of it, but then all this is lingering in behind, obviously. Mold is on the high side. Low amounts mountain cedar as well as ash. The updated count is going to come out in about a half an hour, excuse me, an hour to an hour and a half. Temperatures are going to stay steady the rest of the morning. We'll still have a few showers around here. And then by noon, Noon, we make it up into the mid 50s. Rain continues to move off to the east. We see a little bit of sunshine and then a lot more sunshine later on today. And we will be topping off on the cool side, 61 degrees. Great looking day tomorrow, great looking afternoon today. And that's the start of beautiful weather for the next few days. But we get another front moving on through here. So get ready for some more freezing temperatures. We'll talk about that. Closer look at the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the birthday boy. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Yeah, well, not a whole lot over here, Mike. And thank you. Uh, 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Uh, things are looking a lot better out there. We did have a, a crash that was reported there a little bit earlier this morning, but it's already cleared out and you can see right now more folks are getting the morning started and getting the commute rolling here at 10 at Camp Bullis. But Mike mentioned this uh, just assume all roads are going to be wet this morning, so the commute is expected to be a wet one. But right now no major issues to report and that's because hopefully a lot of you out there are taking it easy out on the roadways. Wide look at the map really just shows a blank slate, so we are starting the road off uh, the day off with some quiet roadways, but a few active construction spots. We'll get to that 
that a little bit later on in this newscast. But for right now, if your travels, they're going to take you right here to the Alamo City. Let's take a look at those travel times right now. I-10, if you're traveling in from Seguin, you're lucky because it's still in the green. 30 minutes at this hour, a little more than half an hour if you're traveling on along 87 northbound from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it should take you about 29 minutes to get to the Alamo City. But let's get it back here in town. A shot around 410 at Fredericksburg shows uh, quiet there, but we can see a lot of those droplets that are taking over to the Transguide camera lens. So we'll keep a close eye on a few things. I'm in contact with our friends at the Transguide offices. So if they have any updates, we'll be sure to let you know what you can expect uh, before you have to go. Guys. Stephen, thank you. San Antonio police are looking for a big rig driver who seems to have a big problem with anger. They say that person shot another driver during a road rage dispute. Chino Ever is live along I-35 near Riddiman and the area where they found the victim. So Katrina, do police have any information on the shooter? It doesn't sound like they have much. All that they've shared with us is that the 18-wheeler driver sped off after what was a rolling road rage incident. Now, they say that that happened just a few miles south of here near Loop 410 and WW White, but the victim, the driver of that other vehicle, ended up here on I-35, just short of that Eisenhower exit. The police tell us that the man who was in his 40s had been shot three times. They say he was behind the wheel of this car trailer just before one this morning when he got into a dispute with the driver of an 18-wheeler. Police say the trucker pulled out a gun and shot that man. That man then pulled over on the highway to call for help. Now that trailer driver was rushed to a hospital and he is expected to survive. And again, the 18-wheeler driver was able to get away. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. The Williamson County Sheriff's Office up near Austin has issued a clear alert for 42-year-old Aisha Ortiz. She weighs about 141 pounds, is about 5'6 in height, black hair, brown eyes. Ortiz was last seen wearing a black sleeveless vest jacket with a red hoodie, black pants, and black and yellow rain boots up in Georgetown. Police believe her disappearance poses a threat to her health and safety. You're asked to call the Williamson County Sheriff's Office at 512-864-8282 if you have any information. And we have an update on Brennan High School's temporary lockdown yesterday after a shooting happened a while away. We are learning about one of the two suspects allegedly involved. Now this all coming from the Bear County Sheriff's Office, which provided this new video. 17 year old Caleb Rackley is accused of the shooting on Victorian Oaks near Military Drive West. Many people thought there was an active shooting at the high school, but San Antonio police arrived to lift the lockdown after checking the school. Rackley is charged with two counts of deadly conduct and deputies are still looking for a second suspect. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is visiting Great Britain today. It's his first trip to the UK since Russia's invasion began nearly a year ago. British media reported Zelensky's plane landed at a London airport this morning, where he's expected to hold talks with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in hopes of getting more advanced weapons as key braces for another attack from Russian forces. The death toll from the earthquake at the Turkey-Syria border has climbed to more than 11,000 people. This is now reportedly the deadliest earthquake in more than a decade. More than 30,000 people have been hurt, and authorities expect the death toll to continue to climb as rescue workers race to pull survivors from the rubble in cities and towns across a wide area. 6.07 right now, President Biden praised what he calls American resilience during his second State of the Union address in front of a joint session of Congress. But as ABC's Faith Abue explains, his speech sparked some tense moments in the chamber. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. President Biden kicked off his second State of the Union address calling for a unity agenda, highlighting how bipartisanship has led to several accomplishments in his first two years in office. Democrats and Republicans came together. You came together to pass one in a, gen one in a generation, once in a generation infrastructure law, building bridges connecting our nation and our people. The president's speech prompting multiple rounds of applause from both sides of the political aisle as he talked about issues like public safety, spotlighting the parents of Tyree Nichols in the room. Just as every cop when they pin on that badge in the morning has a right to be able to go home at night. So does everybody else out there. But the warm welcome by the politically divided Congress quickly turning into a rowdy reception. Some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Anybody who doubts it, contact my office. 
I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene among those seen calling the president a liar. Well, I'm glad president Biden grinning and engaging with the jeering Republicans. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. But apparently it's not going to be a problem. The president's address touching on a host of issues, including a call for an assault weapons ban, abortion rights, funding for Ukraine, policing and immigration reform, as well as his administration's effort to cool inflation, urging Republicans to join him to finish the job. If we could work together the last Congress, there's no reason we can't work together and find consensus on important things in this Congress as well. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders delivering the Republican response. The Biden administration seems more interested in woke fantasies than the hard reality Americans face every day. And a source tells ABC News White House officials were very happy with the president's performance. He was welcomed back with cheers and high fives. On Capitol Hill, Faith Abube, ABC News. Well, the celebrations continued overnight in Los Angeles as LeBron James made history. He's now the NBA king of scoring. Last night, he scored 38 points against the Thunder to become the league's all-time leading scorer, surpassing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He held the record for 38 years. Never thought that this record would ever be touched. Does this now make you the greatest player of all time? Are you now the GOAT? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm going to let everybody else, uh, you know, decide who that is or just talk about it. But it's great. It's great barbershop uh, talk. Now, the scoring record is even more impressive, given that a lot of people would say he's not a ball hog. He is fourth on the all time assist list. Yeah, that's important, too, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> Got to share. Time now, 610 and 48 degrees for now. Search engine Google adding some changes to make surfing the Internet safer how they plan on achieving that and how it'll affect Google users. Plus, promoting health awareness and increasing health literacy is important because only about 12% of adults in the U.S. have like proficient health literacy. UTSA. Well, let's look out there with live cam, 48 degrees, a cold start to your day. And you know what? Be prepared for that rain. I had my umbrella and I'm so glad I had it this morning. We'll be right back. Just about 6.15, the U.S. Department of Education is awarding UTSA a federal grant for its Ronald E. McNair program. Alyssa Cole is live outside UTSA's downtown campus with more about how this program is geared towards underrepresented students and it's making an impact among the research community. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, you all. This program is very important for San Antonio because it's a sore source of funding for that post baccalaureate research research for those minority and underrepresented students including latinos and african americans now this morning we're directing our attention to utsa first generation undergrad student erica mcfarland who says she's experienced life-changing opportunities as a result of the program under the mcnair summer internship she carried out research on systematic literature review that analyzes how college students mental health was affected from social isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic she wants to contribute to the growing post-pandemic era research more research definitely needs to be done on college students um, in comparison to general populations they're at an increased rate of depression anxiety suicidal ideation and stress now, when I spoke to her, she told me it's her mission to become an expert in maternal and child mental health to make a positive impact for women in the future. And just a note here in light of the recent Challenger explosion anniversary and Black History Month, a lot of you may be wondering who Ronald E. McNair is. He was a he was a physicist and a NASA astronaut. He was a part of that Challenger voyage mission, and he was also one of three mission specialists, a part of a crew of seven. Reporting live outside the UT UTSA downtown campus, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 616. Six, six, Sorry about that. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos, who's yeah. celebrating a birthday yeah, today. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, I think I'm going to be over it by the time the day's over. I'm getting a lot of nice birthday wishes. Just so th um, wishes. So thank you guys. All right, let's get a look here at Trans Guide. You know, the commute is actually pretty quiet right now. Uh, wet roads are what you can expect. We do have some issues that we reported earlier. We did have some issues that were reported along I-10 near UTSA Boulevard. I saw some flashing lights out there, but as of right now, I'm not seeing 
seen any reports of crashes in the area, so we'll keep a close eye on it. But we mentioned what we are seeing are a lot of those droplets and wet roads out there, so just be careful as you get the morning commute rolling here. Uh, again, we're starting the morning off with some quiet roadways getting busier a little minute by minute, but we're going to keep a close eye on things. But watch out along I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. I mentioned this earlier in the week, but we have that utility work that's going to take place, likely part of the northeast expansion project. And remember, that's being done in phases, so we're going to see this part of the work take up until uh, take place until Thursday, February 9th. That's tomorrow, but it is overnight, so that's some good news. But watch out because it is going to be where we will see some right lane closures on the southbound frontage road of I-35 from Whirlwind Drive to Randolph Boulevard. But that information, along with other construction spots, uh, is posted on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. You can head over there for more information. But right now, the commute is wet, but moving along just fine. There's 10 UTSA Boulevard, so that's where we had that incident reported earlier. But looks like things are a OK. We're hoping you have an awesome birthday today. We chipped oh. in and got you a, a really, really nice exotic car. Oh, but it turns out it's not street legal. It's going to have to go through the okay. testing. <laughs> turns out there's a port entry oh, fee. Okay. We had no idea. Does really. it drive itself? It not yet. Does so not drive itself. So okay. instead, said Steph got you a balloon over there. Oh. <laughs> uh, so happy birthday, happy Steve. Birthday. Thank you, guys. Happy I appreciate birthday. that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> if you are celebrating your birthday today, happen on a school bus. I don't know why I came up with that transition there. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, this morning we're going to be right around upper 40s, low 50s. And we are going to have some showers and a couple of thunderstorms out there. And then later on this afternoon, 61. We are going to clear on out this afternoon. It's going to be the start of a great stretch of beautiful weather today through the next couple of days and then get ready because make sure you got a heavy coat. Uh, it's going to get cold in the next few days. Here's what it looks like on radar as of right now and we still have rain around the area. Of course, it's not raining everywhere as of right now. We've got sort of these uh, three different bands and all this will eventually start to work its way off to the east. Very quickly, I want to check out and this is the 12 hour rainfall estimate on radar and the nice thing is now unfortunately Unfortunately, kind of like last week, out to the west, you missed out on a lot of this rain. But look at all the, the beautiful rain around here that a lot of folks did pick up. And there were a couple of a uh, couple of bullseyes with some heavier rainfall totals. And just to kind of take a look over here by Garden Ridge, uh, that one little spot right there, just about seven tenths of an inch. And on the uh, northern side of Bear County, inch and a half right around Leon Springs, inch of rain and over there by Medina Lake. Yeah, let's go Medina Lake, about an inch of rain. Out at the airport yesterday, we picked up a quarter of an inch. And then that doesn't even include what has fallen since midnight. and. Looking at uh, the total so far this month, we have picked up about nine tenths at just in going through yesterday's total, which is more than double what we should be getting so far for the month of February. So that's a good start. We're still a little bit behind for the year, but at least we are getting some more rain and then there's even more rain in the forecast. So as you look at all these uh, cells that are continuing to work their way up to the north and there's actually another decent little spot developing right here, just uh, kind of split in between Castorville and Hondo. Everything's sliding up to the northeast, sort of scattered here. Like I said, all this will continue to move off then clear on out to the east. Now, as far as temperatures today, we may get to 61 tomorrow. Big warm up after a really cold start, but then another front moves on through here and most of the rest of the next seven days are going to be at or below a normal high temperature and with low temperatures tomorrow we start off at 40 kind of chilly. Then that next front moves through here. We're going to be down to freezing by Saturday. Quick warm up Monday preceding the next front, which is going to be coming on through here. So here's the low, which is giving us the rain, pulls down the cooler air and then gives us that reinforcing shot of cold air for Friday and the start of the weekend. Great looking through Saturday. This next low moves on in here that pulls more moisture on in here. Clouds increase on Sunday, then it will start to work its way on through and also take note. I keep pointing this out. Think back a few weeks ago where these lows that were coming on in here we're staying a little too far north. They'd pull a front through not close enough to give us any sort of rain, but now they're pushing a little bit further to the south. That one comes through then by the middle part of next week and right on the heels of that there is another one. So great pattern where we've got rain every couple of days around here. So no complaints. 54 degrees. It's nice to see some green in the grass. 54 at noon. Most of the cloudy skies rain this morning and then that will move off to the east and then we begin the, the clearing process. A lot of sunshine later on today. 61 
breezy northwesterly wind, 15, 20 miles per hour. Cold tomorrow morning, don't need a jack in the afternoon, 30 degree warm up, beautiful day. Then the front moves through or that next shot of cold, reinforcing cold air. So down to 39 Friday, only in the upper 50s, freezing Saturday. Beautiful weather all the way through Saturday. Sunday's not going to be bad, just a lot more clouds increasing mm -hmm. and then a chance of rain overnight Monday into Tuesday. Warm hearts, brisk mornings. Oh, that works out. Oh, and I didn't even know it works for Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> it's my next career. Just you wait, Mike Oster. Hey, I want to be an awesome card writer. 622, 47 degrees. And still ahead, Facebook is giving creators more freedom on the social media platform. How it also promotes online safety. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day that's effective without topical steroids. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. Plus, they felt fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke. Rinvoke Relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Topping your morning consumer news, Facebook is giving creators more control over their comments section. The company just announced new comment moderation tools. You can search comments by keywords or emojis, then take action in bulk for things like uh, such as liking or hiding them. It's part of an effort to promote online safety. Google is taking a step. It says we'll make internet surfing safer. The company will soon automatically blur explicit images that appear in searches, and the setting will be in effect even if the safe search function is off, so the feature will not affect explicit text or links. 626, 47 degrees. Still ahead, Trinity University has a new president. What she says is important to her in this new role and how she wants students to be more active in the community. Big trouble is ahead for a big rig driver. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say that person was involved in a road rage shooting, but I'll tell you why it may not be so easy to find him. Coming up. It is wet and chilly outside. This really does tell the picture out there. Traffic moving along at 410. It's a wet morning out of San Antonio International Airport. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 8th of February. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good morning so far, and I hope you're prepared for that rain and the cooler weather. And Mike says it has been raining cats and dogs in some spots this morning. Yeah, it's been just pockets. The good thing is nothing has just been sitting in one spot, so everything's been moving along. But yeah, there have been some pretty hefty downpours in places. At one point earlier, Earlier this morning, there was anywhere from, say, marble to uh, kind of uh, pea-sized hail detected in or picked up in parts of uh, Kerr County right around Kerrville. Right now, we've got plenty of rain out there by the airport. Temperature is at 48 degrees. We've dropped down just a couple of notches in the past few hours, but the humidity is quite high, even though both of these numbers have dropped from yesterday. Relative humidity is high. We've got a northwesterly wind, and despite that, with all the humidity out there, the wind is helping to prevent any fog from really forming up. Still got some showers, not any real uh, no gully washers as of right now. Pretty good downpours down here just to the east of Floresville. And then there were a couple of good thunderstorms and even some of those spots out there in parts of the uh, hill country as of right now. And we've got these few spots that will continue to work their way up to the northeast. But uh, actually, we're not actually seeing any uh, lightning in this picture right now. Over there by LaGrange and Hallettsville, got a couple of lightning strikes. But everything is continuing to slide off to the east. And after the sun comes up, with some of those showers off to the east. Some of those may start to kind of build up a little bit more in our extreme eastern counties later on this morning. 43s in Bandera, Comfort, Bernie Stage, 48 out there at the airport. Good breeze out of the northwest, even a couple of gusts at times, and it is going to stay breezy throughout the rest of today. Mold is on the high side. Mountain cedar and ash are low. Update account will come out in about an hour or so. So showers, a couple of thunderstorms this morning. 
that's continuing to work its way off to the east and we'll still see some leftover rain for the next couple of hours. Then it's going to start to come to an end and skies will begin to clear on out. We're going to have mostly sunny skies by later on today. Cool, only 61 for a high temperature and breezy. Then tomorrow, cold start, warm afternoon, gorgeous day. Then the next front moves through here, so it's going to be cold starting off Friday morning and especially Saturday morning down to freezing. Gorgeous sunshine this afternoon through Saturday. Really nothing but sunshine out there, and then we will have more clouds. But overall, a good looking weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Birthday boy. Yes. <laughs> Anything going on? Hey, thank you, Mike. Uh, you know what? Things have been quiet over here, guys. Uh, today at Camp Bullis is a quiet shop, but morning rush has begun, and we're already starting to see a lot more activity out on the roadways. Check out 35 uh, there at the upper and lower levels near Flora Street. Really, uh, of course, you can expect a wet commute this morning. In fact, a lot of the Trans Guide cameras have been taken over by droplets, just like this right behind me. But our friends over at Trans Guide are using those wipers to make sure that we can get a clear shot of the roads out there. Thankfully, no major issues are being reported at this hour, so that's good news. But remember, the roads are wet. Just be safe to assume uh, that you can expect that out there. US 90, we're already starting to see that build up as you approach 1604 uh, on the far west side as people are making their way into the Alamo City. That's always expected, and really, we're going to start to see a lot more of that red take over our map there as the morning commute does get going. But for right now, just expect some wet roads. 37 at Houston, you can see a lot of that there on the Trans Guide camera lens. We'll watch the roads closely and have those updates for you coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Seth. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say a rolling road rage shooting has left a man in the hospital. They say he was shot by the driver of an 18-wheeler who kept going. Katrina Weber is live where police found that victim along 35 near Ritterman, and we know he was shot multiple times. Is there any update on his condition, Katrina? Yes, yeah, so initially police told us that that driver was critical after being shot three times, but later they did update his condition. Now they tell us that victim was behind the wheel of a car trailer when he was shot a little bit before one this morning. Although they found him on the shoulder of I-35 near Ritterman, he told officers that the shooting actually happened a few miles south of there. Police believe he got into a road rage dispute with the big, big driver on Loop 410 near WW White Road. Again, that victim shot three times. That man who was in his 40s was rushed to a hospital. The 18-wheeler driver sped away. Well, early on, at least, it seemed like police did not have a whole lot of information on the big rig driver other than he was in an 18-wheeler, but they did search the area. Now, uh, they said that that could change, though, as they get a chance to talk to the victim. They could get more information. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A plea deal got this man a 20-year prison sentence. Anthony Nash is convicted for two homicides two weeks apart back in 2020. Now, he was sentenced yesterday in the 226th District Court. That's right. The first shooting is from January uh, 7th of 2020. 30 year old Anthony Sanks was gunned down at an apartment complex over on Cinnamon Creek. Another man, John Sheringhausen, was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Now, court records show he, along with Nash, lured Sanks out to be shot and killed. Two weeks later, on January 24th, a shooting happened on Renova Street, and that's where 27-year-old Andrew Salazar was killed. San Antonio police say he was shot while driving in his Ford pickup truck. Police arrested Nash more than a year later for the death of Sanks and then connected him to this shooting. Because of the plea deal, Nash is allowed to serve both sentences at the same time. Nash will be eligible for parole in 10 years. Now to some dramatic images of rescues in the rubble after that historic earthquake on the Turkish-Syrian border. The death toll overnight approaching over 11,000 people and more are still feared trapped. ABC's Lionel Moyes has the latest. This morning, American search and rescue teams arriving in Turkey to join the around-the-clock search for earthquake survivors in the bitter cold. New videos showing teams racing to save people buried in the rubble. This man digging through the rubble searching for his young daughter, Noor, buried in debris. The rescuer saying, your father is here, don't be scared, Noor, please look at me here, talk to your father. Noor looking up and seeing her dad, she was finally freed after nearly 24 hours. For countless other families, immense grief. 
This father who lost his 15-year-old daughter refused to let go of her hand. And perhaps the most dramatic rescue so far, this newborn found alive, crying. The child's mother gave birth while buried underneath a collapsed apartment building. Sadly, she did not make it. More than 70 countries and 14 international organizations have now offered aid to Turkey, but the concern is growing that Syria, ravaged by years of civil war, is getting far less help, due in part to economic sanctions and political conflict. An estimated 23 million people have been affected by Monday's earthquake. Many people here in the U.S. are asking how they can help. For information on how to donate, visit unicefusa.org slash ABC News. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. And trending right now on KSET.com, we are hearing from Trinity's new president, Dr. Vanessa Beasley, wants Trinity University visible and active in San Antonio, even if it's a heavy lift. We want to lean into those experiences that give our students a chance to practice what they're learning and, and reading about in the classroom, out in the real world, if you will, through more experiences. Now, on Friday, as part of the celebration of the new president, Trinity is promising to light up the sky. Then Saturday, will uh, investiture. You can hear more from her on Spreester Sessions right now on KSET.com and the KSET YouTube page. 638, 47 degrees. Next, we'll look into the newest escape room in San Antonio. We're going to tell you all about it as some of our KSET crew went to check out the challenges. This is kind of fun. Right now, 642, there's a new escape room in town, and it has five different themed escape rooms. KSA 12 decided to take on the challenge with a few co-workers. Let's take a look. There's a new escape room company here at the rim, and I thought I'd bring some friends along to check it out. Let's see if we can escape. I think that's a thumbs up. <laughs> they, they were busy out there. Yeah. Loud but fun, right? Fun. <laughs> time now, 6.43. Time to check in with our Stephen Cavasso. You don't want me in a, an escape room. I'm not helpful. And honestly, <laughs> I think I just can't deal with the pressure from people trying to escape. So that's OK. We'll cancel birthday plans. We're going to take him <laughs> out tonight, too. That's all right. <laughs> so we thought you were bringing to work a different kind of escape room. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, listen, you know what, though? I know folks may want to escape some of the slowdowns are seen out here, guys. I did pick up some back-to-back uh, -back traffic there at 90 at Loop 1604, uh, slowing folks down out there, but really there's nothing being reported at this hour in that area, and this is along US 90 as you approach 1604, and you see a lot of that red out there, and that's really what we are going to start to see take over the map. Uh, morning rush is here. We're in the beginning stages of it, but watch out because the roads are wet, so just assume that when you head out the door this morning. Take it easy. Take your umbrella with you, but also watch out here along State Highway 16, Band Dara Road. We do have that utility work I mentioned that's going to take place on Friday, February 10th. Should wrap on Monday, February 13th. It's overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Full lane closure in both directions right there at the Cedar Trail intersection. But back here, things seem to be moving, but pretty slowly there at uh, 90 at 1604. Another busy spot there in town, but it uh, just looks like right now we're in the thick of morning rush, so we'll keep a close eye on things. Okay, we've got oh, a big birthday not today. Not for me. Steph's yes! my dad. Steph's been writing a speech for, for oh, months now. Steph. So what do you have, Steph? You. <laughs> Happy birthday. We love you. Oh, wow. Ooh, photo. <laughs> nice Very Does that qualify as a thirst trap photo? You know what? <laughs> I let's, think so. Let's leave that up a little longer. <laughs> I'm, just joking. I'm totally kidding. Don't pull it back up. But uh, thank you guys. You guys have made me feel very special. Uh, usually, I'm, I, I, I really don't like attention, but thank you guys for. for uh, oh, oops. We've special. been doing that all morning. Uh, all right. I'm, a, I'm a shy guy. Just got uncomfortable already. No, no. I, I, I 
it. I appreciate it. I'm just a shy guy. So. Happy birthday. We Thank love you. Yeah. Well, oh, happy look, birthday. Doesn't like attention, but there's a balloon over there at his uh, traffic desk. Yeah. 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 Yes, but right. I did not buy the balloon. <laughs> no, no, I did. I did. Right. No, that I'm going to leave it yeah. up there. Maybe, maybe I do. No, you're not doing a Miley Cyrus saying, I can buy my own balloons. No. <laughs> no, yeah. we'll do that for you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It is wet out there this morning, and we're going to continue with showers, even a um, couple of thunderstorms here and there uh, throughout the rest of the morning commute. So if you're heading on out yet, just uh, assume that all the roads are pretty wet because we have had rain overnight. And even though it's not raining where you are right now, take an umbrella, take a rain jacket with you. Everything is sliding up to the primarily to the north and a little bit to the northeast. And as you can see here in town, we had a little bit of a break in the action and now we're starting to see more of these showers kind of uh, kind of fill in. So right in the downtown area right here by 37 and then heading up 35 just coming into downtown kind of a, a moderate shower here and then over there on the southwest side of town over by Lackland coming up 35 around Von Orme and then on the northwest side as well. Leon Valley and and then heading over in toward Lotus, we've got a few of these light showers and then a couple of uh, maybe heavier cells and even this one right here by Leon Springs. Now there aren't any lightning strikes being detected with this, but it's a brief very hefty downpour, but again, not anything. Nothing is sitting just in one spot. Everything is moving along very well around the area and then further on up to the north in the hill country. We've got a couple of more spots with a few heavier downpours and this one right here by Hondo and these are continuing, like I said, to work their way just up to the north. So we will have still one or two of these heavier cells that are going to be developing and even though everything is sliding straight up to the north, the whole batch is working its way off to the east throughout the course of the morning. So the forecast temperatures upper 40s, low 50s, pretty much steady throughout the next couple of hours. We'll still have some of these showers around here. Winds out of the northwest 10 15 miles per hour. So a decent breeze despite the fact we have all this humidity. We've got enough of a breeze to really prevent any fog from forming up and then by noon couple of peaks of sunshine, especially off to the west, and then we'll see more sunshine as the uh, clouds continue to clear out to the east and then 61 for a high temperature today. Clear skies overnight, so we've got some of the showers left over this morning. And then those clear on out and we've got a stretch of beautiful weather then this afternoon all the way through Saturday, maybe a cloud here or there. More clouds come in Saturday night, plenty of clouds hanging around here on Sunday and then Monday later on in the evening. We'll have another chance for some rain to move across the area in through Tuesday morning. Then that clears on out again with yet another front. So every couple of days we're getting that nice chance for a few showers around here, which I've been saying all morning is fantastic news. Great pattern to be in 54 degrees at noon. Most of the cloudy skies rain still left over this morning. Then again, that continues to clear out to the east and then a high temperature today up to 61. So we're five degrees below normal. Mostly sunny, breezy, good looking day though. And then tomorrow cold start down to 40. Big warm up up to 70. About the same temperature Friday morning, but nowhere near as warm and windy on Friday in behind the next front. And then the really cold air settles in here Saturday morning down to freezing here in town. So good hard freeze in the hill country. Gorgeous in the afternoon. More clouds Sunday. Chance of rain Monday with yet another front. And yeah, every couple of days a front, some rain. Beautiful pattern. It's Steven, beautiful. FYI, uh, for your birthday, Mike's going to sing you happy birthday during Good Morning America. Oh, I hope okay. it's in a tenor voice, Mike. Well, yeah. Oh, I can't get the, the baritone the, voice. Yeah, bass. Bass, too. Happy birthday, guys. <laughs> Thank Happy you, guys. Birthday. 649, 47 degrees. And today on GMSA at 9, Science with Sarah is back. Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be out at Harmony School of Innovation making balloon thermometers with fourth grade students. So tune in for that later this morning at 9. As I said yesterday, you just thought balloons were out of the news this yeah. week. Uh, 649, 47 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Coming up here on GMA, the reaction to President Biden's State of the Union address. Plus, Vice President Harris joining us live with the view from the White House. And desperate search for survivors in Turkey and Syria after that catastrophic earthquake. The glimmers of hope this morning. And overnight, LeBron James breaking the NBA's all-time scoring record. Michael sat down with him to talk about what it means to him. You'll see that interview right here on GMA. 653.
Time to check in with the birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> that should just be my name for the rest of the day. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you all for the well wishes. And you know what? I wish you a safe commute today because roads are wet. But let's get a quick look around town. 35 North at Loop 410. You can see a lot of those droplets have been just taking over the Transguide cameras. And our friends over at Transguide have been wiping the lens for us to take a look out there. But I haven't really spotted any issues at this hour. In fact, the commute has been pretty quiet, which is great because now we are in the thick of morning rush. You can see a lot of the buildup already taking place here along US 90 eastbound as you're heading into 1604. A little bit more on uh, the northwest side as you see it right there on the map, 30, uh, 1604 near Bandera, and of course 35 southbound as you're traveling in from New Braunfels. But back here on Transguide, yeah, expect some wet roads. We're going to watch the commute closely, and we'll have updates for you throughout Good Morning America. But other than that, just uh, expect to pack an umbrella, right, Mike? Yeah, for the, the morning commute, it's going to be lasting all morning long, as you can see over there by the airport as well. We still have some of these showers. A couple of moderate uh, downpours here and there. Everything's sliding up to the north to northeast and then that whole batch of rain will continue to work its way off to the east throughout the course of the uh, the day. 47 here in town now, so we've dropped another degree. Low 40s in the hill country and a good breeze out there. We are going to be up to 61 for high temperature today with plenty of sunshine and then lots of sunshine. Some cold temperatures the next few days. So. Happy birthday, oh, wow. Mr. <laughs> Traffic Guy. <laughs> wow, look at that cake. Anybody That's want to harmonize here? Happy, happy birthday, birthday. We'll figure that out. Wow. Yeah, happy birthday, Steve. They spelled it right. Thank and you. Yes. Goodness. Steven with, yes. a P, with a V. With a yes. big, huge exclamation point. They happy did. birthday, Thank you guys buddy. so much. I appreciate it. It's your it. cake. Dig in. You okay. can eat it. Okay. Right. Right. Sli right. It slides oh, a little bit. It's a, yeah. it's a yes. sliding cake, too. Yeah, we'll uh, no, right just thank you guys. Yeah. I'm really uh, glad to be working here with you guys. It's, you guys have made me feel right at home since I uh, took over the traffic helm. So uh, thank you for making me feel like I'm one of the part of the family. Well, you are part of the family. Yes. And here's the great news. Uh, we can't remember our mid-30s. <laughs> so, so we're kind of living by yes. what's, uh, yes. what's the best piece of advice you would give uh, someone in their mid-30s? Uh, mm. <laughs> try to remember your 30s. No. <laughs> yeah, plastics. Wow. Plastics, Benjamin. Plastics. Well, that's so. funny. Look up the movie <laughs> The Graduate. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, advice for Mr. Cavazos? Uh, just, you know, enjoy every day. I mean, it goes by, well, it, you already know, it goes by super fast. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again for uh, making me feel very special. I get a little shy here under with all this... Uh, Attention. It is your birthday, so you get to do. Take a bite out of that thing. Just I do like it, it. Just on like, TV. <laughs> no, no, just just hold the cake up and take a little bite. I, out. I, I, I could try Go for that. It. I don't know. I mean, mm. uh, can I do that? Well, sure, like, you like can do it. It's your cake. We okay. have to hold the card. Hold the card bar, though. Right yeah, here. There you okay. go. Right My there. advice there. was to eat the cake. Come and on, enjoy right, the come cake. On. Big well, he did it. There, there we go. did it. Oh, my birthday, so. You look like you got kissed by a Smurf. <laughs> I happy. got you. So I don't have to share this. Well, no. not that section. Not that part. <laughs> right, right. So, right. Not and that don't section. And don't forget, we are going to have uh, traffic and weather cut-ins uh, throughout the rest of the morning. Yes. Taking you abreast of all of the uh, Happy birthday, the Steven. Yes. So. yes. Hello, hello to Steven's family who's in town. Yes, I'll say. Do we not have 34 candles? <laughs>